up YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to go over what I believe is probably one of the fastest mapping budget builds in Scourge League, and it is Occultist Poisonous Concoction, and I will probably be playing this build in the upcoming Atlas Invasion, and if I really enjoy it, maybe even the Delirium Everywhere League. So in this video, I'm going to include the budget shopping cart, so if you're playing Trade League, then you can actually just uh, import it in and then be able to buy all of the items that you want. Now... This build's weakness is that a single target is not out of this world. But as you may know, the Atlas Invasion and the other Delirium Everywhere is purely an XP race. Because you do you do need to kill some map bosses, but you don't need to be doing the Uber content. There's really no real point in doing Uber Outer when the race is purely just for getting XP, right? So if you just want to get XP, you want to blast the maps, you want to get carried by occultist ex explosions, and you want to do it on very low budget level. I believe that this is probably one of the easily one of the fastest builds out there and the budget is very very low if you look at the shopping cart all of the items are pretty much just some rares resist and if you want to get into a little bit better gear you can get throw in some uh, plus level of gems or chaos damage over time multi or influence items which I will go over. Now, if you're planning to play this build SSF, I did include a little leveling guide with color-coded gems and what you'll need to be leveling as. So let's start off by getting into the leveling portion and how you will actually be leveling this build now that you see. Oh yeah, and disregard all the stuff at the top. This is from I'm Exiles rank one push in SSF Hardcore. And this is also the build that won SSF Hardcore. So you will know that this build is an absolute blaster for XP farming on low gear level so most of this uh skill guide is pretty much color coordinated so as always when you level with a witch you will be starting off with storm blast mind lovely with free and then you have freezing pulse arcane search onslaught so in this guide i pretty much said what you need to do so you need a mule of scion to get onslaught and this is for ssf if you're playing on trade league you'll potentially have someone help you out and just buy you the gems uh, you could probably level with poisonous concoction a lot earlier on so level 4, you put in Swift Assembly and then you use Frost Bomb or the Storm's Onslaught. And your movement skill is Frost Blink and you link it to Arcane Surge. Level 8, you add an added Lightning Damage to Storm Blast Mine. Level 10, you switch out Frost Blink with Flame Dash. Level 12, you... I think everything actually stays the same at level 12, so you don't really do anything different. I probably delete that part. But you kind of want to fix your resist with your Crafting Bench with using Orb of Transmutes. And level 8, the most important thing about leveling Orb of Storms and Storm Blast Mine and why it's so OP is the Wand Crafts. So make sure you do the Wand Craft. You can do it at level 8 and level 20. So you get a Magic Wand, one White Sapphire Ring, and one Alteration Orb. And this one here at level 20, you should be using a Rare Ruby Ring since we're going to be using Armageddon Brand for a little bit. Now, once you finish off, you get to level 16 and you do the Chamber Quest and you kill Fidelitas. You're able to pick up your auras and you're able to add in Herald of Thunder, Summon Skitter Bots, and you can link it to Unbound Ailments, which you can buy in Act 1. Level 18, you get do Weaver and then you get some support gems. So you add an Elemental Focus now instead of added Lightning Damage. You also pick up Wave of Conviction to debuff and apply exposure. So level 28, you get Gravicious done. And then that's when you get your level 8, 28 skill gems. And you're able to get Armageddon Brand, Onslaught, Combustion, and... For cremation, you use cremation, elemental focus, LMP, conch effect. And then you have flame dash, arcane surge, and then you use new auras of Herald of Ash, Summon Skitter Bots, and you can use Flame Wall as a DPS increase on single target fights. Now, once you get to Act 3, you can do Library, and then you can get the Poisonous Concoction Gem, and you kind of want to be leveling up these gems on the side. So you if you have a four link, you want to be using Poisonous Concoction, GMP, Vicious Project. Uh, GMP, Greater Volley, and maybe Vicious Projectiles. Or you can use Faster Attacks to make it feel better. And then later on, once you get a Sixling, you add a Life Tap or Unbound Ailments. Now, the thing about this is you probably can't start using the skill at level 31 because you need to level up the gems. So you should buy the gems at when you finish the Library Quest, level it up in the offhand. And once you get level 38 and you get access to GMP and Greater Volley, then you can switch into the Poisonous Concoction. And then you're able to actually use some more defensive gems like Castle Damage Take and Steel Skin. I did color coordinate everything because my girlfriend, who's a newbie, did say that people like color coordination. It helps out a lot. 
and then you're getting despair, blasphemy, temp chains as your auras, and then you can maybe run grace, vitality, precision. You probably don't need vitality anymore, so I'm not too sure about this. And then you have plague bear, increased area of effect, and wintering step. So the whole build is kind of revolving around plague bear, and I'll explain in a little bit. So basically, you're leveling as Stormblast Mine, and then you're leveling into Armageddon Brand. So the profile I'll be using is the number one guy in SSF. So let's import the profile over and see how exactly you could adapt this. So if you're starting out at lovely, you want to go out this way. You want to get the spell damage, right? And then you might want to get like two points. So you have like points to respec out of it, right? So you pretty much just take this, go out this way, come down here, take the elemental damage nodes, go over here. And then what, try to get these poison nodes as you want to have chance to poison. So you have 100% chance to poison by the time you swap over. So then when you actually swap, you can just take these two points here and drop all of these spell damage nodes and then drop these elemental damage nodes, which is the extra boost you need for leveling at the start. And then you just fill out the rest of the tree, prioritizing like getting poison chance. So getting these nodes, these nodes down here are the big damage ones. This one helps you get phasing. Now, and then you can also get charge mastery to get some uh, charges. And this gives you a... Uh, Spell suppression chance. So this build is very, very tanky. Um, in my opinion, if you're trying to do the race and you're playing soft core, biggest thing is honestly not dying. So I'm gonna be playing a relatively tanky build because dying is probably the worst thing. Like if you die like five times at level 93 it, or 95, even it's gonna take a long time to gain the XP back. And it was actually surprising how fast I hit 97 nearly in Gauntlet just because I never died. So I do think not dying big plus right so i'm going to include this pop so now let's get into well, i'm trying to make this video a little faster as it's actually kind of low on time it's already two and a half hours to the event so i do have a little shopping cart section i'm gonna go over the gear choices that you can use so this build is going to be a little bit more soft corey because ssf obviously you can't get everything i think i prefer devoto's devotion you get attack speed you get chaos res and you get movement speed and this is just a very good chess piece for actual zoom. And most importantly, it also has a lot of armor and evasion. If you don't like this, you can just use a helm with life and resist. And if you want to get way more expensive than this, you can do it with what's it called? Life and minus chaos res of a hunter helm. Now chess piece, if you're in softcore, universally, I think carcass jack will be the best. The way the skill works is that poisonous concoction. When you throw it out, it has overlap with AOE. So it makes AOE very, very important for the build. So here, so well, my character just has no AOE, so it looks like trash, but you can see here, AOE helps out a lot. Carcass Jack helps out with the overlap, so best chest by far. And gloves, Rampage gloves, if you're gonna be doing the race event, I think are the best. Has a lot of armor and evasion again, and then you get Rampage when you have maximum endurance charges. And you can get endurance charges either through enduring cry or using overcharge node so you should have rampage pretty fast by the start of the map now shield you pretty much just want to get spell suppression shield so i put in a search of life and spell suppression now for the love of god please do not take these like search parameters as like the gospel and you can adjust these numbers and probably see other things so if you see that items are super expensive you can just change it around so Ziri steps, so you pretty much just use these. They're cheap boosts with lots of life, move speed, and spell suppression again. And these are just rare boots alternative to a Ziri step. So you can get resist on them perhaps. And now Stygian, you can also choose it to be letter belt. So you can type in letter belt here, but I pretty much just put a search with life and some resist. So this is pretty much helping out everyone who's more like new to the game and just want to see some easy things to buy. And here, uh, Amulet, you're pretty much looking for life. Damage over time multi, chaos skill gems, or deck skill gems. Now, if you want a cheaper amulet, just make just get rid of this section and then just change it to some resist. But basically, these are the main things that will scale your skill damage. And then later on, if you're more ballsy and have more money, you can upgrade to in presence. So if despair has no reservation of cast as an aura, this makes your blasphemy despair free. And this is actually usually pretty cheap, especially if it's an Atlas Invasion League. And now you have rare gloves, and these gloves have life attack speed. 
And if you want to get them to be more expensive, you can make it so that they have chaos damage over time. Multi as a hunter pair. Helmet. Oh yeah, helmet. Oh yeah, helmet. Devotos is a pretty early game option. I forgot about this. Is that you want to open suffix so you can craft on this mod known as increased duration of ailments you inflict while focused, which actually does help out your single target a lot. So I pretty much put a search on with life resist and then having an empty suffix or crafted suffix modifier so you can recraft it. So pretty important uh, piece right here. Now ring, this is a very flexible slot. I pretty much just put some life and resist for you guys. But you can change your resist around. You can change it to have a lot more attributes or whatever you need. You pretty much consider ring as a fix all solution, right? And I did put iolite ring, which is chaos damage. So next we have large cluster jewel. This is more of like an end game thing. So these are the notables that you want. It is an eight passive chaos cluster. This will probably be pretty expensive at the start of the league. But you have touch of cruelty and you have unholy grace. Now this build scales really well with attack speed, which is why we try to get so many attack speed things. Medium cluster, we use chaos damage over time or just generic damage over time. And what we're going for is flow of life, which gives you increased damage over time and percent life and regen. And brood for potency, which gives you flash charges gain and more damage over time. And then circling oblivion, which gives you increased duration of ailments and increased damage over time. And now jewels, pretty much just some mods that you do. So the way that this thing works is it counts two, and then this mod has to be there. So all these jewels will have percent life, and then it'll have two out of all of the following. So it has attack speed, attack speed while holding a shield. So you'll choose any jewel with two of these properties. If you want to get like a really good jewel, you can change that number to three. But you can see that these jewels will be really expensive as they're already 20C in the Scourge League. So next we have Watcher's Eye. Watcher's Eye, pretty much you're just going to be using Attack Speed while Precision, which is the best one. But then you can also look for these ones that gives you a little bit of a defensive benefit. So basically, Shopping Cart is pretty open-ended. Build is honestly really cheap for the items. You can see there's not even an item that I searched for that was one Exalt. This is pretty much a SSF build. Note of caution is that this build might be... Um, it's not the best bosser at all, but it is a mapping, a peer mapper, right? And I do believe that's what this league will be in the next league because explosions carry the build pretty hard for clear. Now, so basically you guys know the leveling tree. Now let's just lastly talk about the play style of the build. So play style of the build is you have withering step, which you could probably put on left click or, I don't know, or you could manually cast it. So the play style of the build is you cast Poisonous Concoction and you turn on Plague Bearer, right? And the way Plague Bearer works is while you inflict poison, you incubate, adds 40% of the expected poison damage to Plague Value. And then once you have enough poison incubated, you can turn Plague Bearer on and it's kind of like a Righteous Fire or Blade Vortex around you. And it deals Chaos Damage per second equal to 12% of the Plague Value when infected began. And then it slowly drains down over time. So if you see like... I'm Exile Play right now. You can see here, let's see, you can see this value right here. This is the Plague Bear value that gets incubated. And once he inflicts enough poison, he can pretty much just turn it on and run around. So you see how there's this green aura around him and it just kills everything. And then it goes down and then the Plague Bear, he has to incubate poison again with poisonous concoction and he builds it back up every time he attacks. And then he turns it on and runs around the map. And that's pretty much the whole what's it called whole gameplay loop of poisonous concoction and it's also why the build is so fast because it's pretty much like you're playing old school blade vortex and then you have the explosions from your ascendancy and it's just a really fun play style and that's why i'm looking forward to playing it so much now you can see here he has the focus ailments on the left click and that's pretty much what you should probably be doing or you can put wintering step right here on the left click too now the wintering step on the left click is also fine but either way you have to press one of these buttons manually either the focus or the wintering step and i don't know what's preferable but it's up to you now basically that's pretty much it it's movement skills you can see you use a shield charge and flame dash and then you have vol grace on the tool toolbar and he has t this is plague bearer right so overall very simple skill very fun to play oh yeah and then in terms of dps cooldowns you have ancestral protector and yeah, so this is pretty much, and then defensively, you have castle damage taking steel skin. 
and shield charge like the faster attacks for your movement skill. But hopefully this is giving you a pretty good overview. I don't think there's like, I know Ziz made a little bit of a guide about it, but I don't think this build is super, super popular in, what's it called, in uh, Scourge League. Like when I go look at it, most people play Pathfinder. But in these events where it's pure XP, I do think that a cultist should win out. But we'll see. Maybe P Pathfinder will be better. Pathfinder does have better flash sustain and better um, damage. But you can see here, Occultist is definitely the lesser known sibling. Kind of like the, what's it called, Lightning Strike Berserker, right? Lightning Strike, you have the Great Raider, and then you have the lesser known Berserker, and then you have the weirdos left over. But hopefully this guide has helped out you a lot. I do know the leveling does help out people. And the shopping cart should hopefully help you out with getting it started, especially if you do choose to play Trade League. I'm actually kind of torn about SSF for Trade League because I just found out that Scourge is not in the Atlas Invasion, which is kind of bad because Scourge is how you can get six links easily. So I don't even know how you're supposed to get a six link in Atlas Invasion if you play SSF. So it's going to be like a random crapshoot unless you do Lyra, Ardain, Exotic Goods. But hopefully this has helped out everyone. I hope you enjoy the new events and this build if you do decide to play it. But thanks for watching everyone. Hope you find more mirrors, exalts, and mage bloods than me. And see you next time. Bye.